Access to clean, sustainable and reliable energy is critical for the delivery of essential health services, from maintaining the cold chain for vaccines to operating vital medical equipment. Access to electricity can mean the difference between life and death. Yet, about a billion people are served by health facilities without power. I have invited ministers of health and energy, heads of international and philanthropic organizations, and other health and energy champions to join the high-level coalition on health and energy. Our aim is to strengthen cooperation between the health and energy sectors, increase political momentum, spar investment, mobilize public support, and drive practical solutions on the ground. Energy is a key to ensuring people's good health and well-being. It is needed to power health care facilities and to store the vaccines which are so crucial in our fight against COVID-19 pandemic. Today, many health facilities around the world have no access to electricity, excluding about a billion people from the critical medical services and equipment they need. Most of them in sub-Saharan Africa, where 60% of health facilities have no power. Reliable power is critical for pumping clean water and for powering life-saving equipment, such as ventilators. Improving access to a clean and sustainable source of energy can transform lives. It can power health centers and ensure that life-saving medication is refrigerated and emergency surgeries can be conducted. In 2021, the High-Level Coalition on Health and Energy unanimously endorsed the strategic roadmap to promote healthier populations through clean and sustainable energy through three priority actions. First, dramatically increase investments in electrifying healthcare facilities and clean cooking. Second, provide the funds to design and implement clean energy plans tailored to the needs of the health sector. And third, develop tailored policy tools to unlock the potential of clean energy and address health sector needs. Energy and health are deeply and strongly connected. And we, responsible for this type of policies in our countries, should work much uh, clearly together to provide a consistent answer at the multilateral level. The urgency requires accelerated action from investments and adequate human and financial resources to policies and coordination. In our country for many decades, we've had very high infant and maternal mortality rates, and part of it has been because our health services do not have power at critical moments when women deliver babies. Sun 2015, Nepal Swastha Suvida Sambandi, Sarvechan Anusar, स्वास्थ्य सेवा प्रदान करने आधा संस्था आरुमा मात्र नियमित विद्युत आपूर्ति राय को देखा है को थियो तोरा और ये धैर्य ने सुधार और भाई का सं तो स्वास्थ्य मंत्रालय ले सभी स्वास्थ्य सेवा और लाई नियमित रूप में विद्युत को आपूर्ति करना सक्दो प्रयास कर रहे को सा केन्या हैज मेड गुड प्रोग्रेस इन इलेक्ट्रिसिटी � in 2016, Gavi, working with its alliance partners, WHO and UNICEF, launched what we call the Cold Chain Equipment Optimization Platform. This has enabled the delivery of, of immunization services in, in many of those facilities where it wouldn't otherwise be possible. Renewable energy plays an important role for global healthcare, rapidly providing clean, reliable, and cost effective electricity to health centers across the world. Through these kinds of partnerships and with the right resources, we can bring power to many currently off-the-grid health facilities by 2030. Modernizing public health systems with the distributed, renewable energy, solar power, and other advanced green technologies can help us achieve our goal of health for all. It offers opportunities for economic growth since renewables have become the most cost-effective solution. 
This is where the jobs of the future are. Affordable energy will reduce the cost of various vital healthcare interventions. And in particular, this will improve access to health interventions in poor rural areas. The Ministry of Energy that I lead rolled out a program providing mini grids and off grids to island communities. We see a tremendous improvement in the healthcare facilities and well being of people living in these island communities. The healthcare facility electrification aims at providing 24 hours electricity on core components of health systems, which improves the operational capacity of health facilities. My office will continue to support states in understanding how action on clean energy can unlock tremendous impact on human rights development and well-being, calling for an end to reliance on coal by demanding and enabling clean energy for everyone. These efforts are just a few examples of what's needed and what's possible when public, private, and philanthropic sectors work together. I pledge to call on other nations to make this a decade of action for energy for all. By expanding equitable access to sustainable energy, it's helping strengthen health systems that benefit millions of the world's most vulnerable children. UNICEF is proud to be part of this important effort, and we are fully committed to working across our entire organization to support its goals. We need everyone to join hands in making this happen. Together, we can achieve universal access to affordable, reliable, and modern energy services and save lives. WHO thanks all members of the High Level Coalition on Energy and Health and all of our champions and stands ready to work with you towards a cleaner, healthier, and fairer future. I thank you.